Well, I think you have a story to tell, yes? Yes. We're, we're here to, we're, we're talking about pornography and effects on, especially effects on relationships, marriages, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so I, I, I was thinking um, a story that I have heard more than one time Okay. is uh, the wife will say that on on their wedding night they they didn't have sex beforehand they were um, you know that was a value that they both shared and um, that they might have even talked about sex and, and intimacy ahead of time um, especially if it that was something that was a shared value, but that um, she looked forward to their their wedding night, their honeymoon, the the period of time right after um, th- they got married. Looked forward to exploring uh, that aspect of a relationship, the the physical intimacy mm-hmm. aspect, and um, what I've heard from from multiple. Uh, people is is this this story that it, on on the wedding night or or very shortly afterwards on the honeymoon um, when when they're be- beginning to explore sexual intimacy that uh, he, the the husband um, becomes very either demanding or pushy or mm-hmm. or just seems very irritated by something and at that time she feels just very confused by it just not really understanding what the irritation or anger or frustration from him like where where that's coming from because Mm -hmm. she was thinking oh this is this this is something that i've been really looking forward to and kind of through the process of 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 speaking with both of them about that a lot of times what i'm hearing is that um, he had very definite ideas of what the sexual encounter, what sex was going to be like and, and what, what he wanted and how she was supposed to perform and all these, all these, these things. And it wasn't necessarily communicated or if it was, it was done in, in a way that is much more like what, what I was saying, where she feels it, it was almost aggressive or pushy, um, mm-hmm. demanding. And I I think uh, through talking with those guys, a lot of times uh, a very um, consistent story is that they discovered pornography early on, um, sometimes even as early as 10, 11 years old. um, And pornography became a very uh, regular part of their of their life, their daily life, and um, and was was always present through their sexual development. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think dictated or or gave an idea to what uh, sex should be like and and will be like in 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 relationships later. Um, yeah, I don't know what more to say. <laughs> that, right. that, that, that's, I think that's a huge thing, right? I, I, and I may be misremembering this stat, but I believe what I saw is that the average age at first exposure to pornography for boys is in like the eight to nine-year-old range. Yeah, yeah. And I think part of what happens is that because that occurs so early, it takes on this kind of normative feel that that's part of the sexual education somehow of boys or young men or full on men, right? That that becomes part of their sexual education. And so I think when you get to where you started in your story, when I think you, when you get to this you know, adult version of this, what I'm finding with the folks I work with is that there's a huge discrepancy in the way that men view porn and women view porn. So whereas for a lot of the men, it's just 
this thing that men do, this normative thing that men do, what's the big deal? You know, there's kind of that attitude to it. The women feel a profound amount of hurt associated with it, which seems to mystify the men, like, you know, in the what's the big deal sort of place in their head, the women's pain doesn't make very good sense. And so many of the folks I'm working with, the women's experience then is that when they try to share with their men how this feels, that it's hurtful, that it's whatever, there's such minimization that he does toward her. That, and part of it is like this character assassination, you're just being prudish or you're just being whatever. Um, as though she's somehow to blame for feeling hurt by it. Um, but I have to say, I, I'm in this place these days. And I don't know if you're finding this too or not, Jonathan, but I'm in this place where I'm really concerned by all the ways in which pornography is minimized. Oh, I, absolutely. Because it strikes so early. I think men, most men don't have any view into the negative consequences of that. Well, I, I, I absolutely ag agree. And um, just even thinking about the, the age, the, the, the average age that you, that you mm -hmm. discussed um, being eight or nine years old uh, at first exposure to pornography, um, that, that is pre-sexual development. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it is exposure to sexual um, situations and content uh, prior to the, the onset or the start of, of uh, healthy sexual development. So in that way, it is, um, it is, I think of, of it as, as dysfunctional and abusive in itself. That is a traumatic experience. And because sometimes there is curiosity or pleasure associated with, with that, uh, that, dis that discovery or that memory, I think a lot of the, the guys that I work with, they do not view that as a traumatic uh, moment in time. And it, it absolutely is, uh, a, 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 a tr it has uh, adverse effect on the, the on development, especially the, the sexual development. Sorry, hold on, my dogs are having a fit about something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, they're done. I really appreciate that you used the word abuse because I was thinking that same thing when you were talking that in a lot of ways, I think exposure to pornography at such a young age has the same function as being sexually abused in childhood in that there's this premature sexualization of children. Yes. Um, and that's not just true of boys. I mean, there's some of that same discussion in the life of young girls through a whole series of cultural practices that have less to do with porn, but more to do with how we dress them or kind of the, some of the activities we involve them in. But nevertheless, the same idea that they're exposed to this idea, they're exposed to this whole genre that psychologically they're just not ready for. And my guess is, I mean, I've never been a boy, obviously, but my guess is that for boys, part of how this goes kind of unnamed is that oftentimes the exposure to pornography happens from their eight-year-old friends or from a brother in the family who's a little bit older. So it's not like necessarily some adult figure exposes them, although sometimes that's true. Or sometimes they find, you know, dad stuff hanging around that they kind of get into. But, but it often comes under this more innocuous sort of banner of it's what the neighborhood boys are looking at. It's what my brother does. Gee, I want to be like my brother. You know, there's that kind of thing. And so I think it comes in sideways like that. So they don't recognize it as abusive. But I think that's part of where the minimization begins, right? Yeah. That, they, there might be some sense of taboo, like, oh, maybe we know at some level we're not supposed to look at this, but 
what's the big deal? My brother is, my father is, my friends down the street are. Right. Well, and what, what, what got me thinking about that was you, you had used the, the term, um, that early exposure being sort of part of their uh, sex, no, sex education or sexual education. And um, that's, that's, I think I, I, I bristled hearing, hearing that. Uh, and I think that that's, I, I, I hear that a lot from, from clients, uh, especially my male clients talking about that, that was their, their first, first sexual education experience. And when I think of sexual education or any sort of education, um, especially as a parent, I think of, of something that is, is uh, thoughtfully and intentionally presented in a way that will um, increase awareness of and knowledge of, of a certain area while, while also m working to mitigate any sort of harmful effects that it might have. And I, I don't, I have not heard from very many clients. I have not heard a lot of people talking about how um, they, when they give the talk or when they do have a, a sexual education um, conversations, I don't hear a lot of conversation about pornography at all. Um, and I also don't hear about the potentially harmful effects that pornography can have on relationships. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say a big yes to that because obviously part of what's missing in pornography and part of what's left out of the education, if you want to call it that, is any sort of context for sexual behavior that it occurs within a relationship, that it has relationship value, that it has relationship impact. Um, and so I, I think even just missing that part, I mean, I, I talk with families a lot about the difference between having sex and sexual intimacy, because one doesn't guarantee the other one. Mm -hmm. I mean, the intimacy thing speaks directly to the necessity of relationship to frame the sexual behavior. So if this is not a relationship that's safe, if this is not a relationship that's emotionally intimate, that's vulnerable, that's transparent, that's all that good stuff, right? If it's not that, then the sex is not going to be that either. And so to try to take pornography, which is not relational, and set it inside a relationship is asking for trouble. They have different goals. Yeah. I sometimes startle my clients, I think a little bit, when I say to them that pornography functions as an affair. And they look at me like I've said some strange thing. And so... Well, because of what you just said, that right? an affair is, uh, is relational and it, it, it involves a third party. It involves someone else. That's right. And, and I think we know that 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 uh, pornography is not r relational uh, in in what it is, except that it also is. So it's not relational in the sense that the person viewing it has a direct relationship with any particular actor or person that they're seeing, but it is relational in the sense that they have a relationship with pornography, right? They they turn to it for a reason, right? Like we talk about really any addiction, whether it's a chemical addiction, whether it's shopping or gambling, I don't care what it is, but there's that sense of all of us in right and wrong ways, we go to things for comfort. We go to things for stimulation when we're bored. We, we go to things for distraction. We, we go to things that we think will make us feel better. We, we take our pain to those places. We take our loneliness there. We take unmet needs to all those kinds of places. And part of what determines the outcome is whether the places we take those things are helpful or hurtful. And so to the extent to which we take what we feel somewhere to something, we develop a relationship with that thing. 
an affection for it. Um, we make a place for it in our life. We make time for it. We spend money on it. I mean, just like you would an actual person, we, we do that with the activity too. And so in entering into pornography, making time, space, room for it in taking our needs to it, it becomes a relationship that competes with the real relationship. Yeah. And feels like an affair. Yeah. That time and attention spent on pornography mm -hmm. is, is being taken from somewhere. It is. And rather than, I think, so sometimes there's that view, right, that the time I spend in pornography enriches my sex life with my spouse. That's not what the spouse says. They don't feel enriched by that. They feel deprived by that. Yeah. I also, there, I think there's a lot of overlap here with that a discussion, maybe for another day, but a, 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 a discussion of how this influences um, uh, sex addiction as well. And I think that this is, that's one of the concerns, especially what, what I talked about from earlier um, mm -hmm. exposure to pornography. It's, it, it kicks off that sexual development with, mm -hmm. with pornography at a very central uh, point yeah. for for sexual behavior and um i think the 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 development of a sex addiction is um it's like what you what you discussed about about uh taking making time for a pleasurable activity and um engaging in that i think that 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 cycle um I've seen that uh, develop in a lot of clients who don't who don't necessarily recognize it or name it as sex addiction. And I think some some clients even some people that I've I've spoken with don't really recognize that that someone can be addicted to sex or addicted to pornography. Um, I think it's complicated by the fact that like what you were talking about earlier, that in a healthy, intimate, trusting marriage, sex is a healthy part of that marriage. Yeah. And so it seems like, I think some people have a hard time understanding that, 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 thing that in that marriage is very healthy um, could be problematic or even could get to a level of addiction in other, uh, in other areas. So I have a really good example of that. And I've actually heard this from a couple of clients that there, it, it sort of comes to light that the husband's involved in pornography and maybe he even brings it to light. And you know, part of what we know about pornography is that there's a progressive nature to it. So things that early on are stimulating later on aren't enough. And so the ante gets up, so, gets up, so to speak, right? And so porn has this kind of progressive quality to it. But that gets transferred inside the relationship. And so I see a lot then of the husbands wanting the wives to join them in the pornography or them trying to recreate pornographic scenes using their wife instead of the actors. And then there's that same quality of, and there's that same message to the wife's heart of what we've done up to now isn't enough. I need more and I need the more to look like this. So oftentimes the wives, not usually very happily and not, you know, there's cer certainly a begrudging part usually, but they might comply with some of that, but then that's not enough. And then this is not enough. And then this is not, and, and it begins to be that progressive thing inside the marriage. And so the resounding, I mean, the resounding emotional message to the wife is you're not enough for me. Right. You as a person aren't enough. What you offer of your body isn't enough. The way that you offer 
isn't enough. I need more. And I need it to look like that. And it begins to feel to the wives like they are now acting in a porn video. And that feels all kinds of bad. Yeah. You, when you were talking about the about that and and sort of sometimes as a begrudging but but willing participant, I think uh, my original story that I've heard from a number of different couples, um, I think upon reflection of their marriage and maybe later discovery of of porn addiction, um, but when they go when they think back on those very early sexual experiences, I think that's that it feels um, really painful that they the women realize that what was going on that those first few encounters was yeah. actually it wasn't about exploring sex and sex sexual intimacy together. It really was about um, reenacting or recreating sexual fantasies and mm. it really didn't have anything to do with with her or an interest in in exploring that very intimate moment with her it really had had everything to do with with his his desires or his um understanding of of what sex should be or whatever his fantasy was and that just translates into feeling used. You know, feeling used for someone else's pleasure and right. not being anything mutual, anything that really has both parties best at heart. That's a tough way to start marriage together. Yeah. And I think it, another part of the minimization often is well, if they can just keep their wives from knowing about it, it won't hurt them. Except that there's no way to contain pornography's effect to just the time you spend in pornography. I mean, it's going to bleed over. What, what, as you say, whether it's the attitude or the expectation, whatever, that, it's going to bleed over into the marriage. There's no way to stop that. Absolutely. And I think that's where, just to connect some dots, that's where some of the gaslighting then happens, where the woman has some sense of something being wrong. She may not know it's pornography, but something doesn't seem right. Something doesn't feel whole. Something doesn't feel respectful about this. But when they try to bring it up, it's said, it's viewed, it's blame shifted as just something wrong with them rather right. than him owning what he's bringing to this. Right. Oh, that I've heard that one before. The discovery of of his of his porn addiction or viewing porn mm -hmm. uh very very quickly becomes well, if 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 you were doing your job as my wife, oh, I yeah. wouldn't have to be viewing pornography. And it's a, an immediate dismissal of, of her response and emotions and needs, especially in that moment of discovery. And seriously, have you ever met someone who had no porn history before marriage and now all of a sudden says, you're the reason? <laughs> like, really? You really want me to believe that you had no involvement with porn until you got married and then it's her lack that causes you to go there. Yeah. Like, what a ludicrous sort of. Right. Right. Well, I'm feeling like we could talk about this subject for a really, really long time, <laughs> <laughs> which would be fine with me. Um, but where, where do we, where do we close this? How do we close this? Maybe. Maybe you and I keep talking about this, right? Absolutely. Because there really is some stuff I want to figure out better for the couples I work with, right? I, for both of them, for, for him and for her, because there's such brokenness around this topic. So if you don't mind, I would love for us to maybe pick up more conversation 
another time and just talk through some of that. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's, it's a, a topic, this topic in particular doesn't get discussed um, much. And yeah. I think it's, I think it's important um, in recognizing all of, all of the effects, especially on, on the relationship. I agree. Okay, well, to be continued. Yes. Okay. Thanks for the chat, Jonathan.